Hey everyone, today I'm going to go over pre biz gear for plate tanks in Cataclassic. So I'm just kind of combining all the tanks for this one because there's a lot of overlap for the gear. There's a few differences. We'll talk about those as we go through. We're going to start with Blood Decay here. One of the main things I'm going for is spell hit cap just to make sure Outbreak never misses. That really kind of throws off your rotation and loses you death strikes when that happens. So on AD up, they're not counting the 9% passive spell hit we get so with this eight percent that brings us to 17 percent so we're capped for bosses you can see we have about seven percent melee hit so most of our physical attacks aren't going to miss either i also really like getting a bit of expertise it feels super bad when you're constantly getting dodged and parried on bosses trash whatever for the expertise i'm not super concerned with hitting the 26 soft cap i just wanted to have a good chunk to really reduce the amount of dodges and parries i get if it's easy for you to actually hit that 26, definitely go for it. In order to get this hidden expertise, we do have to give up a little bit of avoidance. It only ends up being around like 4%, so it isn't a super big deal. That's basically going to equate to taking around like one extra melee attack on average per minute. So it's not a big deal to me. I'd much rather have my attacks consistently land than have that tiny chance at an RNG avoided hit. The ways you're actually going to die on bosses are to missing cooldown timings or doing mechanics incorrectly. So getting one completely random avoid per minute really isn't going to be very impactful. If you really want to, you can go the avoidance route. I just personally wouldn't recommend that. If you're playing a prop pal or prop warrior, I would just skip the hit and expertise and just get as much avoidance as you can after mastery. Those two classes are going to have a little bit less survivability than Blood Decay, and a lot of their survivability is tied to pushing normal hits off the table. They're trying to get full combat table coverage. If you don't know what that is, check out my video on combat table coverage to get a better idea. But for me, that's the primary gearing difference between Blood Decay and Prop High and Prop Warrior. On Blood Decay, I really prefer to get the spell hit cap and a good chunk of expertise. Whereas on prop high and prop warrior, I'm just completely forgoing them and just getting as much avoidance as I can. I'll have a set for blood decay, prop warrior, and prop high linked in the description, but we'll mostly just be going down this blood decay one to show you the different gear. So just keep in mind as we're going through these on blood decay, I am preferring the pieces that have mass and hit or mass and expertise, as well as reforges on the prop high and prop warrior, I would be going for the avoidance alternatives there. So let's start with the helm. The engineering helm is definitely the top choice, but if you don't happen to be an engineer, there's also the helm of easeful death. The haste is actually pretty good for blood decay for rune regen, but we're going to reforge this anyway. For prop value and prop wear, the haste isn't great, but it's being reforged. It also has a nice little mass socket bonus, so you can get a little bit more there. For the next slide, we have the lustrous eye that's just from JP. You can also potentially use the carrier weight pendant it has parry and set dodge. You want to keep your parry and dodge ratings pretty much equal because they diminish at the same rates now. Uh, Prot Warrior will prefer to have a little bit more parry than dodge just because of the hold the line talent. There's also the possibility that you could get this BOE neck, but it's going to be really, really expensive. So I expect most people won't have this, but this is great if you can get it too. For shoulder, we're going Raz's Pauldrons on Blood Decay. On prop back prop where I'd probably go for these ones with dodge and say hit on them. They do have a little bit less mass, but they do have a lot of dodge. And again, if you have a lot of gold, you can get these pauldrons of Edward the Odd. These are great. For the cloak, we're doing wrap up the great turtle. This is just from Hajal Rep. This is something everybody should just get. If for some reason you don't, there's a couple alternatives I have here, but just get your Hajal Rep done. Everybody can do this, no problem. For chest, we're doing the BOE blacksmithing chest. This is something I think pretty much everybody will be able to afford, but in case you can't, here's a few alternatives for you. Just as usual, we're going for like mass pieces with avoidance or hidden expertise for bloody K when possible. In the bracer slot, we have kind of a weird situation. So there are 359 bracers from Ram Kahan, but they don't have mastery on them. And there are these blue bracers that have mass and they also have a socket, so you can give them more mass. So these are the ones I would generally recommend. The sand guard bracers aren't terrible. You would just reforge the dodge into mast, but you still do get about double the mast on the alpha bracers. So I'm definitely favoring the alpha bracers, but if for some reason they don't drop for you by the time you're like Romkahan exalted, you can throw the Romkahan ones in. For the weapon, we're ideally going Zenrock, but if you're unlucky like me, 
you may not have it. So the alternatives, we've got the Wild Hammer and the Sword of the Bottomless Pit. You'll actually get a lot more mass on these than Zenrock, so you do actually get a little bit more survival. You lose a little stam, you gain a lot of mass, but we like that trade. So these are the two great alternatives if you are very unlucky like me and you do not have a Zenrock. For the shield tanks, we do want the archaeology stuff too, but in case you're unlucky on this stuff, we do have some more options. We've got a BOE epic shield, which is pretty great, it is very similar to the extinct turtle shell from archaeology. This one's just a BOE that you could buy. It, I'm not sure exactly how much it's going to cost. It probably won't be too expensive because there aren't going to be a ton of people playing shield tanks and a lot already have the extinct turtle shell. So you could probably just look to pick this up for fairly cheap. If you don't have the extinct turtle shell and you don't have enough gold for the blockades lost shield, you do have some other options here. Either of these shields are fine. This one's a little bit better. As far as the weapon, this is from Tolvir Archaeology. So this is not something you can farm during pre-patch. You may not have time to get this one when Cat actually goes live. So we do have a bunch of alternatives here. We've got several weapons that have most importantly massed, but they also have either avoidance or hit on them. All right, so now we're moving on to the gloves. Here you got a couple options. There's the numbing handguards. They've got dodge. The fingers of light have parry. They're basically the exact same glove. Just one has dodge, one has parry. Here we're going to choose the numbing handguards just because we have a lot more parry rating than dodge rating right now. Just trying to get those a little bit closer since our parry is DR'd harder than our dodge right now. For belt, we're going to go for the hardened elementium girdle. It's the blacksmithing BOE belt. But if you can't afford this from Hajal, you can also get the belt of the ferocious wolf. It has crit on it, just reforge that obviously. But at the end of the day, it is a 359 eye level item with mastery, which we love. For the legs, we're gonna take mastery crit pants. There just aren't great tank pants here. So we're just gonna reforge the crit, but we'll get the most mass from these. The Greaves of Splendor are an alternative if you can't get this drop. They're just from JP. Boots of Soul and Rocker from the Twilight Highlands rep. Just make sure you get these, get your rep done. For rings, we really want the Red Rock Band and the Umbris Band. These are just really high mast rings. The Red Rock Band is from Ramka and Revered, pretty easy to get. Umbris Band's a drop. There's also some alternative rings in here you can get if for some reason you can't get these two. For trinkets, the single most important thing you can get is the Mirror Broken Images. In Phase 1 Catarids, there are tons of tank busters that are resistible magic damage. And this is a 1 minute cooldown that significantly reduces the damage of those tank busters. This trinket is the single highest value item you can get. Really make sure you get this. It's from Tolbarad Rep. So get your Tolbarad Rep done ASAP. For the second trinket, the Lifebound Alchemist Stone is incredible. I'm personally going Engineering Alchemy on all my tanks, but if you aren't an Alchemist, you do have a few options. Porcelain Crab is good, you can reforge the dodge into mass, and the proc will give you a ridiculous amount of mass. Once you do a bit more farming too, you can get a second Tolbarad Trinket, the Impatience of Youth, it just masked with a Strength on use. And keep in mind, Strength now also gives you parry rating. And finally, we're at the Relic, so for DK I like the Hit one, and for Prop Warrior and Prop Value I like the Dodge one. That should pretty much cover everything for Plate Tanks getting their Prebus gear and Cataclassic. If you like what I do and want to support me, you can help me out by liking, commenting, and subscribing. Also, you can check me out on Twitch at SubtleFW. Thanks for watching, good luck in Kata, and I'll see you in the next one.